Welcome to Telephony Fraud Study Cases, or case studies, whatever you like to call them. Uh, my name is Nir. I'm the chief architect of the Humbug Project. Um, Humbug is a collaborative approach to performing fraud analysis and telephony analytics. Um, I didn't want to talk about the actual service, what it does, and so on, but I wanted to present a couple of cases that were investigated by us during the course of the last year. Uh, they're fairly interesting. Now, although the title says telephony fraud uh, case studies, this is actually the title I would have given the, call, the actual presentation because yesterday we were talking, um, we had the security roundtable, and uh, one of the people from the Atlanta Astro Excuses group walked up to me later on and says, dude, you scared the shit out of me that, this morning. And we're not here to scare you, absolutely not, but we are here to educate you and tell you a bit more about how fraud is being done and where fraud is uh, being exhibited. <clears throat> Just a bit about myself. As I said, I'm the chief architect of Hamburg Telecom, Hamburg Telecom Labs. Uh, I'm also the CEO of a consulting company in Israel that deals specifically with asterisk implementation, large-scale tier one platforms blogger, author, you name it, uh, underneath are my two biggest achievements to date. Yes, I've won two Digium Innovation Awards, but that doesn't compare. Up till now, just a few statistics about Humbug. Number of calls analyzed since January 1st, 2011, we're talking about 100 million or more calls that were analyzed inside the platform. We're currently servicing over 6,000 connected systems. Some of them are asterisk, some of them are not. We're not only asterisk bound, we do have connectors and APIs enabling you to connect to other systems as well. We have a confirmed blacklist of over 70,000 destinations in the world where we know 100% that if a call of your system goes out to any of these numbers, you're currently being defrauded. 100%. Total alerts issued since January 1st, 50,000. Over 50,000 alerts had been issued by the platform to its users, out of, uh, out of which approximately 15% were 100% fraud. And were be, uh, well, the system enabled uh, our users to stop whatever was happening. Total number of blacklist alerts that were issued, over 10,000. Think about it. These, that means 1,000 alerts every month, every month are, are generated just for blacklist. That's a staggering number. And this is a very interesting uh, fact, is that internal employee fraud is actually larger than PBX hacking, or whatever you will find in the, let's say, in the wild uh, world of voice over IP. Um, this is a small statistic in terms of what our blacklist actually contains. And this is very interesting. If you look up there, you'll, say, you'll see that Sao Tome for some obscure re reason, is the most, the, the biggest destination inside the blacklist for some reason. We are still unable to ascertain exactly why, but most of the blacklist, over 45%, is Sao Tome. If you got calls running to Sao Tome from your system, there's a good reason, these are, there's a good chance this is fraud. Very good chance. Case number one, called this Tale of the Rampant Call Center. <clears throat> um, somewhere a long time in August, um, a call center operator in the United States had contacted us claiming that he believes that his PBX, his call center uh, platform, is being defrauded. He couldn't tell us exactly what's going on in terms of what he believes is the problem, but he said he gave us a few facts. A, he saw an increase of 2% every month in the duration of calls. Every month, duration exceeded, uh, actually increased in two months, in 2%, and that was exhibited over a period of six months. So over six months, all durations increased by 12%. Now this guy was operating a call center with about 360 agents. So we are talking about expenses of, $1, of over $5,000 every month that were taken. Over six months, we're talking $30,000 more. We were called in in order to try to find out exactly what the problem is because he brought in several companies, several integrators, 
who installed, back then installed the systems. He brought consultants in to try and find out exactly what happened. And they were unable to find anything. They said, we're unable to find any hack. We can't find anything that has to do with somebody manipulating the system or using your resources externally. So that specific person had read about us on the internet and said, wow, this could be some people that can really help me. Now, in order to ascertain exactly what was going on, we needed to learn just a bit more about what this person does, what this call center does, and this is what the Humbug system does. One of the things that Humbug does is being able to profile you according to your usage. We're not only looking at your calls and saying, okay, you're calling X, Y, Z, we're also taking note about your business model. For example, what exactly do you do? Are you a call center? Are you a contact center? Do you generate mostly outbound? Do you generally uh, receive mostly calls? And so on. In this specific case, we had a call center that provides lead generation services. Lead gener anybody know what lead generation services are? Nobody? Uh, who? Pull up your arm, your arm. Hands up in the air. Who knows what it is? Okay, I'll explain. The idea of a lead generation service is I'm a call center. I've got 360 employees. I've got a, a, um, I have a whole bunch of people that are making outbound calls, and I've got, I'm getting lists from, let's say, insurance companies, automotive companies, and so on. In our specific case, health industry, clinics. Um, these people call out to projective leads, projective customers. Once they get a customer, they then transfer the call over to the clinics. IVR system to be handled at the other end. <clears throat> Sorry. We've received, <laughs> the guy actually had to send us a CD-ROM of this because it was a few, get, a few hundred megabytes of data, of calls. Uh, the amount of data being accumulated inside the system on a daily basis is kind of staggering, and we had to devise a method how to import all the data that he sent us. Uh, it wasn't a simple project, but it's currently available uh, if you need it. Uh, we imported the data into our system for analysis purposes only in order to see exactly what was going on. Actually, what we did is we started simulating how his PBX system is behaving over time. We actually simulated six months worth of traffic. We then realized a few things. After looking at the data and having the platform start analyzing, and what the platform does is actually takes each call and drives it through a funnel of different filters and different logic entities that go about and look at the actual data and say, okay, this call can be attributed to one, two, three funnels, and that's how it works. We did see an increase of 2% on a monthly basis. So it was 2% on month one, 2% on month two, and so on and so on. We saw an, an increase in the number of general outbound calls of only 0.3%. So that didn't add up. How can you have 2% more duration and 0.3% more calls? It just didn't add up. Something was wrong. Furthermore, we noticed the platform flagged four specific numbers. Four specific numbers, four specific destinations were repetitive, and those exhibited the most changes. Month, uh, first month was uh, one number, then another number, then the other, the other month, again, same two numbers, and so on. So we ascertained that basically four different numbers that the call center is dialing on a repetitive basis had caused the issue. Exactly what was found. We started talking to the representative inside the call center. We started talking to the clinics, the, num the numbers that we got. And then we re actually realized that what happened is that the IVR systems at the clinics were changed. Our representatives were actually calling into the uh, remote IVR system and they had to key in different digits each time to get an agent at the other side and pass over the call. What happened was that one, cli one clinic actually changed the entire IVR instead of two digit uh, in t instead of two key presses, now they need six. Another word changed from four to eight. The end result was that actually each call had its duration lengthened by anything but from 25 seconds to 40 seconds on these four numbers. Now this is something you, you, you will usually not pick up in a normal fraud 
analysis system, simply because the system doesn't look for that. It's not considered fraud, because it's not really fraud. It's called revenue assurance. This is a revenue assurance problem. Sorry? So the end result is that this customer ended up saying, okay, this is not really fraud, but how can we solve it? I'm still wasting $5,000, $6,000 more every month because these guys are always changing their IVR system. Possible solution. Anybody? What? Well, the call center uses an auto dialer to dial to its leads, not to the other call center. Exactly. That was the actual solution. We told them, look, guys, the easiest thing to do is just get a proper DID to point directly into your queue, and that's it. No IVR. So we'll go directly into that. So the end result was simple DID assignment. The next month, cost dropped by $6,000, just like that. Now, this is something that you will not, again, usually you will not find that utilizing a traditional anti-fraud system, simply because it doesn't look for that. Our system, Humbug is capable of doing that because it uses a funnel mechanism. That means that every call that goes in has to go through specific filters and saying, okay, it doesn't fit the blacklist, it doesn't fit your, then it goes over and looks at your personal profile. Does it fit the profile? Yes, no, back and forth, and then it categorizes each and every destination. For example, one of the biggest problems today is phishing, phishing with a PH in the beginning. Banks are being fished every day for data. Nobody is able to pick up on that. I will call the bank, get one piece of data about somebody, hang up, then I'll call again, get a different representative, get another piece of data, again and again and again and again, always from my phone. Eventually, I'll get enough data to go about and uh, make the other person believe that I am the account owner, and I'll do whatever I want. Somebody, hacker will say, yay, this is social engineering. Yes, it is social engineering. But proper telephony detection can go about and facilitate a mechanism to prevent that. Because we are there. We are the entry point. If we'll be, in, it will, if we'll be smart enough to be able to identify that and tell the bank, hey, there's a problem there. Something, is, something funky is going in that area. That bank will automatically say, okay, there's a problem. We need to take care of that. Anybody ever saw the movie Hackers? Who, who saw Hackers? Hands up in the air. Remember the scene? The guy go, calls up and says, I've got a problem on my BLT drive. So that's beautiful. And, and it happens every day. Admittedly, I've done it a few times. Um, the funnel detection that I was talking about will be introduced into the platform. It's called USA. I don't remember the exact wording for USA. Eric, do you remember? USA, user, significant, something, anomaly. At the end, did I write it? Oh, right. True. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> um, so that will be added in somewhere around January 2012. Uh, although right now we do have over 48 different categories of, the, of alerts, which when combined can uh, create a funnel of over 6,000 different variations of alerts that you can detect with the system. Um, questions up till now? Anybody? Everything is real time. Uh, well, blacklists are real time. Uh, profile based alerts, depending on the type of profile alert, some of them are real time, some of them are statistical. So it takes anything between um, five up to 15 minutes for something to generate an alert. Uh, but even inside the 15 minute uh, period, which is consider, it's considered in the telecom industry, if you talk to a carrier and you're going to say, I can generate an alert in 15 minutes, they're going to say impossible because we require eight hours. A company like AT&T, Verizon, require anything between four to eight hours to analyze something that may be regarded as fraud. And in most cases, don't even catch that. So, attack of the multi-tenants. Actually, I wanted to write multi-tentacles, but nobody would understand that. Um, there's a problem with multi-tenant systems. Multi-tenant systems, by definition, are very, very hard to monitor. Uh, who manages a multi-tenant system here? 
How many people? Hands up. I want to see. So we're talking about what? About a quarter of the room right now. You tell me, how hard is it to debug anything on such a platform? Be it based on Asterisk, Broadsoft, Cilantro, whatever. Simple? How simple? Well, I'm currently looking. There is something funky going on in one of the customers starting to dial weird destinations. Okay. Okay. What company is that? Ah. Okay. Okay. So basically, what you did is you built some mechanisms into your system to enable you to see that. Okay. So most of the systems don't have that. For example, anybody know, uh, are anybody here familiar with Broadsoft? Trust me, you don't want to be familiar with Broadsoft. Trust me, that thing has a log file the size of Wazoo. You don't want to go over it. In any case, the nature of the system uh, creates a, a problem for a fraud analysis system. You have a single endpoint that generates information for many, many, many customers, each one with their own profile. Each one has their, their, their own distinct usage pattern. But from an anti-fraud environment, let's say a platform like Cividia or Agilis or uh, Variant, the end result is that they look at it as a single entity. The problem is they're not fully aware of what's going on at the multi-tenant level. In May 2011, a multi-tenant provider had requested that we do a small change to the Humbug uh, platform to enable him to connect his multi-tenant system into our service. Now what he required is an ability to report each and every multi-tenant customer as its own PBX environment saying, okay, instead of monitoring a single system, I'm going to show up a single system as a thousand different systems. Because each one is its own customer, and it makes perfect sense. Each one is its own profile. <clears throat> um, utilizing our API, there's a, a public, publicly available API. By the way, anything that has to do with interconnecting into Humbug and reporting information back to us is fully open sourced. So you can utilize either the asterisk agent that we supply, you can download it, there, there comes in RPM format, tar -GZ if you want to look inside what's inside there, that's fine. There's also a web-based API that you can utilize, does exactly the same. And if you're using something which is not asterisk, there's also a third-party connector that you can use from a company called AGG Software. Um, using the API, he was actually able to go about and separate each of the customers into their own world. Now, once that was fully integrated in, we got some really interesting information from that specific customer. Since May 2011, we generated over 15,000 alerts to that specific customer. So that specific customer has only approximately uh, 1,000 customers in that platform. We generated 15,000 alerts. Over 1,000 alerts were identified as 100% fraud. The alert was issued, uh, some of it in real time, some of it slightly a bit later, about five minutes later, and the provider was able to stop it. It was stopped uh, at mid-ground. Over 4,000 were identified as 90% fraud. Now, what is 90% fraud? It means that we see something which is a deviation from your normal traffic, it is, uh, we call it a mathematical statistical anomaly, but we're not fully sure that it's, unfortunately, fraud is not an exact science. It's not physics. There are false positives. Now, the sheer power of Humbug is the fact that we monitor thousands upon thousands of entities all over the world. So once we identify something on one part of the world seeing an attack, once we see that specific attack pattern again somewhere else, we're able to pick up on that in less than five minutes and we'll be able to generate an alert. And that is something unique. Most of the other were uh, identified as profile alerts, or what we call uh, profile deviations, and generated usually a warning alert. What does that mean? Usually, what, for example, one of the um, alerts that is available on the system is the number of concurrent calls you have, or how many call attempts you're, making, you're doing per minute. So Sometimes you'll get an alert saying, okay, if you've defined that alert, you may set, your, the system may send you an alert saying, okay, your system is currently doing, you've defined uh, the threshold as 24, and now you're doing 36. Check it out. Something doesn't add up. 
It's a profile deviation. Um, again, these are warnings. These are not 100% alerts. Something to be looked at. September alone, these are the numbers for this specific customer only in September. We're talking about four, over 400 alerts in general, over 100 blacklist alerts, community blacklist. Now, the community blacklist is something that we actually go about and compile out of aggregating information coming in from the CFCA. CFCA is a, uh, the American Organization for Fraud and, um, Analysis. These are carriers talking between themselves. We're, me we're members of that. Information gathered from FINA, same as CFCA, only in Europe. We have information coming in from the FBI. We have information coming in from different carriers around the world that are uh, partnered with, with us. In addition to that, we have our own network of honeypots scattered all over the world, which are circulating on a monthly basis. That means that our fraudsters, once they find a honeypot, and they know it's a honeypot because eventually they know that it is, a month later it just pops up another place. So this is information that we gather on a daily or actually tri-daily basis. Um, just in September, as I said, we were able to go about an uh, alert on over, altogether over 900 alerts, which if we're let to go and pass, would have generated over $150,000 worth of lost revenues to this specific customer. Now when you think about it, you say for a carrier such as AT&T, 150000 isn't all that much money. But for, let's say, if you're a tier three, tier four ITSP somewhere operating out of, I don't know where, that's a lot of money. That can actually bring your company to bankruptcy. A few, a few more uh, nice facts about September. Uh, community blacklisted numbers, new numbers that were uh, discovered during September. We're talking about over 20 locations in Estonia. Estonia, Eastern Europe is becoming your preferred location for fraud. I don't know why. Uh, also, Somalia, Africa, big location for fraud. Not only the Nigerians think. Now it's telephony. They've evolved. Um, Cuba, as usual, and so on. Um, premium rate fraud, or premium rate mobile arbitrage. That is the... Uh, the idea of actually hacking your PBX system and starting generating calls into a mobile MVNO somewhere around the world and getting a kickback for every call you make. This is one of the biggest problems. This specific market is currently evaluated roughly at $18 billion profit losses every year. And it's growing. People don't even know that. North Korea is also one of the biggest um, locations and of course uh, 881, Inmarsat, satellite phones. And uh, this is a, a, an, interesting, um, an interesting fact. Uh, we actually saw cases in which some of the hacks that originated calls into Inmarsat were generated from the Inmarsat network, from their IP ranges, which is very interesting. Questions up till now? Yes. Well, currently the system, you, you're, you're kind of walking into an open door. Uh, currently the agent that we have on Asterisk will do only uh, reporting back and will report back to you that, that there is an alert, an alert had been issued. That will go uh, currently on email and later on uh, starting 2012 that will also be on SMS and there will be other facilities. Um, starting 2000, actually December 2011, we'll be issuing a new agent that will be doing what we call proactive disconnection. And this is actually where we're Humbug is going. Um, currently, we have over 100 signups every, every week, and the number is growing. Um, we are teamed up with uh, three different vendors at this point. Uh, Ascosia, uh, some of you may know. Uh, Positron also has the agent enabled on all their new boxes. And Elastix 2.0. Humbug is an integral part of Elastix 2.0. Uh, we'll be starting initial paid services 
in, to, in November 2011, which means next week, something like that. Yeah, I know. Um, for anybody who's here, you can pick one of these up. I'll show you these. These are your, actually, the, uh, the service will have also a free analytics service. So you can sign up for that, and you get free analytics. Not fraud analysis, but analytics, which it works a lot faster from the Astro CDR tool that FreePBX has with it. And in any case, um, these vouchers here will give you two months free trial of all the features that are available on Humbug. So you can go on and use these promo codes and uh, take as much as you want and use these. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Some of this free you're talking about? Uh, currently, it's free. It was, it was free for the last year and a half as we were developing the platform. Um, but now we've gotten into a point where the amount of data being accumulated just reaches a point where we have to start um, um, charging for it. Um, we hope to have, as I said, the proactive disconnection ready somewhere around December 2011. The idea is that the agent that is installed on your Astro system and reports back information to us will be able to disconnect a call that is either uh, defined as a blacklist, that means either a community blacklist, verified blacklist, or a blacklist that you define. For example, one of the things that is available for you is to define that you're not making calls to North Korea. If the agent will see a call going off to North Korea, it will disconnect it automatically, and the system will generate an alert saying, we've disconnected a call for you. 